Apple MacBook Pros are here, and Apple has finally put the Pro in MacBook Pro. The new M4 lineup is packed with upgrades that make this launch really stand out, especially for anyone who has been waiting for an upgrade. Intel MacBook users, it's time. It's time. Now, pricing has mostly stayed in line with last year with a few changes, but the 14 and 16 inch M4, M4 Pro, and M4 Max models all see major gains, with a couple of key exceptions. I'll break down what those are and share which model I chose as a software engineer and why. Now you can use the configurator on Apple's website to pick from a few different models. Well, actually there are 62 new configurations to choose from this year. Last year we had 83 configurations, so there's less this year. And last year we had one secret option that I exposed in a short that ended up with over 3 million views. Good job, good job. Apple later patched that in the configurator and it's no longer an option, unfortunately, because it would have been a great fit for this year's models. And I'll explain why shortly. Now, you've all liked the Google Sheet that I made last year with the M3s. So I'm keeping the tradition alive this year in hopes of demystifying the configurator. And I made a new sheet that you can use to filter through the noise. Select what chips you're interested in, how much RAM you want, how much SSD storage, and there you go, there's your prices. It'll show you the number of displays supported, the memory bandwidth, performance cores, efficiency cores, total CPU cores, and GPU cores are all there. I'll fill in the Geekbench scores when those come out. Right now, all we have is just guesses and estimates because nobody actually has these yet. But let's chat about these chips, starting with the M4. Base models are often the go-to for most people, and this year, Apple didn't hold back. The M4 base model now comes with 16 gigabytes of RAM, a long overdue update for the entry-level MacBook Pro. Even the MacBook Airs now have 16 as the minimum. Apple finally stepped into 2024 here, so everyone can relax, at least about RAM. The next gripe is probably gonna be storage with 512 gigabytes as the base, which may or may not cover your needs. I'll talk about storage in a moment. Apple also updated the external display support, going from one display in the M3 to three in the M4. So many numbers. I have charts coming up. So that's a big win for multitaskers. And here's another plus. We now get three Thunderbolt ports, though on the M4, there's still Thunderbolt 4. Thunderbolt 4 is more than enough for probably 99% of users right now. But I'll still be putting Thunderbolt 5 to the test on the M4 Pro and the M4 Max models for those power users who need it. Now, the M4 Pro seems like a really good update, especially with the 10 performance cores. Memory bandwidth gets a nice boost there, but the external displays too? Come on, two's enough for most people. Now look, Apple has made some solid improvements with the M4 Pro chip, but they've still deliberately kept it distinct from the Max by limiting the RAM. We were so close to having an amazing M4 Pro value here, but with the 48 gigabyte RAM cap, it doesn't go far enough in my opinion. Now 48 gigabytes isn't a small amount of RAM by any means, and for most users it's gonna be plenty. But for my needs as a software developer with virtual machines and containers and Adobe apps, I've gotten used to 64 over the years, and 48 just doesn't cut it. And Apple's choice here seems deliberate. The M4 Pro could support 64 gigabytes just fine since we know that the Mac Mini does. Mac Mini M4 Pro 12 core CPU, 64 gigabytes is an option here. Come on, Apple, but I know why they're doing it. Allowing the M4 Pro MacBook Pro to have 64 gigabytes of RAM would blur the lines in Apple's product ladder a little too much. They need to maintain that separation between the M4 Pro and the M4 Max and charge more for the M4 Max, of course. I also bought a few Mac Minis to test them out and I will be reviewing them soon, so don't miss that. M4 Max. The Max lineup has always been Apple's go-to for the most demanding tasks, coming with the highest available memory bandwidth, aside from the M1 and the M2 Ultra. Those are a whole different world, and I'll be reviewing the M4 Ultra when that comes out, hopefully soon, maybe next summer, I don't know. But as far as the MacBook Pros go, M4 Max has the highest bandwidth and it's been upped this year. And that's essential for things like machine learning and video editing and 3D rendering as well. And the previous Max chips have all offered a consistent step up in performance and price. However, 
Apple has messed around with the Mac chip this time, so you'll have to be careful here. Last year, things got a little complicated when Apple started tweaking the M3 Pro configurations, changing core counts, and even lowering memory bandwidth, which threw off some expectations. With the M4 family, Apple left the Pro lineup alone and this time started tweaking the Max lineup. Now, if you want the top memory bandwidth and core count, so 546 gigabit per second and 40 GPU cores, 16 CPU cores, you'll really have to go for the maximum max because the lower tier M4 Max has fewer cores and lower memory bandwidth, even though it still comes with the max price tag. If you're paying the max premium, my advice is to go all the way for the full core count, 16 CPU cores, 40 GPU cores. And the other thing is the 14 core M4 Max is locked at 36 gigabytes of RAM. There is no other option. That's a big limitation if you're going for a high performance machine and paying these kinds of prices. Now I have a theory. I think this chip was meant to be an M4 Pro with a slightly higher core count and Apple probably used a, a reverse binning process here if there's such a thing I did just make that up but uh, binning is actually a thing when chips are made some cores don't perform fully and are deactivated on purpose leading to the lower core versions of the chips so like in the case of an M4 Pro you have 10 cores and then maybe two are bad or one is bad and they make that an eight core chip but what if you get better than expected yields. It may be possible that Apple had enough M4 Pro chips that yielded higher cores and memory to make this a lower end M4 Max, even though it doesn't match the standard Max lineup specs. If you're familiar with chip manufacturing, feel free to chime in on this theory below. So in short, don't go for the M4 Max unless you're going all the way in. Remove that 10 option for the P cores altogether. Go for the 16 CPU cores total. This is a case where just the tip is not enough. Skip the 14 core CPU. Storage options didn't change much from last year. There's still five options ranging from 512 or half a terabyte all the way to eight terabytes. And in some cases you might want to skip the larger ones. Now, normally I'd say that half a terabyte in a base model is disappointing, but this time it could actually work for many users. With Thunderbolt 5, you can connect NVMe external enclosures and drives that deliver nearly the same speed as internal storage. This way you're not locked into Apple's pricey storage upgrades. Adding external storage at similar speeds is a great way to save money without sacrificing performance. Just keep in mind that to get those speeds, you'll need to get M4 Pro or M4 Max. I've already ordered a bunch of accessories. Don't forget, you're also going to need Thunderbolt 5 cables to hook all that stuff up. This is a cheaper one that I found from a company that I actually trust and I've used their cables before. I'll link to this down below. Now for developers and power users, external displays are essential. And I've done plenty of multi-display performance tests here. And Apple has improved support across the M4 lineup. The standard M4 now has three Thunderbolt 4 ports, which is great, though they're not Thunderbolt 5. And also they're limiting it to two external displays uh, with three Thunderbolt ports. It's kind of drives me nuts a little bit. I've ordered one of these and I'm gonna try plugging in three monitors to see what happens. And I mentioned this before, M4 has only Thunderbolt 4 ports, which is great, though it's not Thunderbolt 5. Thunderbolt 4 supports video over DisplayPort 1.4, which can handle up to 4K at 120 Hertz, while Thunderbolt 5 and DisplayPort 2.1 push that further to support 8K displays at 60 Hertz and higher refresh rates for 4K. I'll show you a table in a moment that's gonna make this easier. As for HDMI, all the new MacBooks come with HDMI 2.1. So if you're upgrading from an M1 or M1 Pro or M1 Max, that only had HDMI 2.0. So this is gonna be a solid jump for you. HDMI 2.1 lets you run 4K at 120 Hertz or 8K at 60 Hertz. And that's a noticeable upgrade over 4K at 60 Hertz limit on the older HDMI 2.0 ports. Now Apple's external display support documentation is a little funny to read. And for Max, up to four external displays, up to three external displays with 6K resolution, 60 Hertz, Thunderbolt, and one display over 4K resolution, up to three external displays, up to two external displays with, who wants to read like this? Nobody, it's so cryptic. Don't worry, I got you. 
I got you. I tried to simplify this a little bit. Here's a really basic table of this to try to capture all that information in a table, but I also kind of split it out into different scenarios in a different table. So here is that. M4 scenarios where you can have displays up to two displays, but if you're going to push it to 8K or 4K at 240 Hertz, only one display. And that goes for the M4 Pro and the M4 Max. Yeah, only one display if you're gonna be pushing 8K or 240 Hertz over HDMI. Two displays maximum on M4 Pro, four displays maximum on M4 Max. And this is my interpretation of that information that was presented. I'll be testing more of this on the channel here. And you might be wondering why with the M4 Max, only one 8K monitor is supported? Well, remember 8K has four times the number of pixels as 4K, which means the GPU needs significantly more power to drive it. Even top GPUs are generally optimized for single 8K display, which is why supporting multiple 8K screens isn't practical just yet. Also keep in mind that 8K displays are still out of reach for most users. Whoa, that's, uh, that's a lot of money. And also Thunderbolt 5 accessories are just starting to emerge. But if you're looking to future-proof, this capability will be there and available when you're ready and more accessories become available. And when it comes to battery, Apple claims will get even more battery life with these new models. Up to 22 hours video streaming on the M4 Pro. Well, video streaming is one thing, but actual real world use is another thing. I've ordered a few of them to run through my all-nighter real world test, which includes coding, code compilation, app usage, music, and video playback. Basically a full workday's tasks. Don't worry, I won't be sitting here. It's all automated with a script. I know you were worried about me. <laughs> I wrote a script to do all this and I've been using it to test laptops that come through here. This will give us a real look at how they perform next to current battery champion, which is the Snapdragon X Elite, as well as Intel's Lunar Lake, Ryzen AI 9, and previous Apple Silicon models. Don't miss those comparisons, which I'll be doing on this channel as soon as I get those laptops. Now the configurator has some extra options that are not in my table because I consider them just add-ons. These are things like the Nano Texture Display, which is just their code word for matte finish. Then do you want Final Cut? Do you want Logic Pro? video and audio editing software and things like that just to increase your bottom line now for the nano texture display that's actually the first question they ask you which is a little bit different than previous years this is the first year they're offering it on all the models but i think that brightness actually matters a lot more than this and these displays now hit 1000 nits sustained but if you're sitting with your back to a light source though that anti-glare coating won't perform miracles for you it's like choosing between a focused bright spot or one that's smeared across your screen. Both of them are bright spots and both of them are gonna prevent you from seeing your screen very well. Personally, I don't see much value in paying extra money for a matte finish. It's just not a priority for my needs. Now, as for my main machine, after weighing the RAM options, display capabilities, and overall performance across the lineup, here's what I ultimately went with and why it's the best fit for my workflow. For the last couple of years, I've been using the M2 Max MacBook Pro 16 inch, and I'm Made videos why I didn't choose the M3 Max last year. It simply just wasn't enough of an upgrade to be honest with you. But since I'm dealing with an M2 Max chip, going to an M4 Max chip is a bigger jump. Getting that extra memory bandwidth is gonna be really good for the tasks that I'm doing. Machine learning being one of them, and that's a big one. And that's why I also went with 128 gigabytes of RAM this time. So I got one of those machines. I'll be testing that out as well. And my plan is to keep that machine to be my daily machine. I'm saying machine a lot. Sorry about that machine. Now that's overkill for most people, but if you're doing machine learning, that's not overkill, not anymore. And also machine learning comes with this extra other piece of baggage. Not only do you need more RAM, but you need more storage for those gigantic models. And for the last year or so, I've been constantly struggling with this two terabyte drive that I have in here. It's a lot, but I have videos on here and I have machine learning models. So I've been buying things like NASes to offload my models. I upgraded that as well to four terabytes. So that's gonna be my next machine. Eight terabytes is a bit much, but four should be good. And if I need to offload something, that Thunderbolt 5 is gonna really help me out. Now to see my long-term review of this particular M2 Max MacBook Pro 16 inch, you can check it out right over here. Thanks for watching and I look forward to doing the tests. I'll see you very soon.